with the South and North Poles, the roof of the world is more colorful. Endless mountain ranges, lofty snowy mountains, and tranquil lakes decorate this beautiful plateau. By the mountains and gentle slopes, there is a vast grassland. Many times in their songs, herdsmen have expressed their love for their dear hometown with diverse colors. The annual horse racing festival is the most important feast for herdsmen. People come together from all over, several days in advance, to put up tents for the grand gathering. <laughs> Two tent areas have come into being naturally. One for carnivals and the other for competitions. Led by their owners to the riverside, horses are ordered to step into the rivers. This is an old horse taming method. The cold river water is said to be able to adjust the chi of racing horses. Owners decide how long their horses should stay in the water according to how quickly they have just run. Suran Dajia has come again with his old horse. His son Duoji closely follows to observe what will happen. Suran Dajia knows how much his son loves horses, especially this old one called Shitsa, who is familiar to all participating herdsmen. The 12-year-old animal has already clinched five championships, including one gained when it was injured. Every day, Doji braid Shidza's tail into a new style. Apparently, the biggest dream for Doji is riding Shidza to win. Most riders participating in the competition are boys aged between 7 to 10. They are lighter than adult riders, but they must have excellent skill to claim honors. The father knows Doji should face the reality. begins to rain, but no one stops taming their horses as the competition is just around the corner.
the festival begins, unveiling a seven-day carnival. On the other side, the atmosphere is surprisingly calm. The younger brother, Tsuren Chiyin, came out early in the morning. He is the horseman selected by his father. All their relatives have praised Tsuren's gift for this game as he has shown consummate riding skills. Just ahead of the competition, their father changes his mind. He asks Tsuren to compete with a new horse and gives Shizu to the son of a relative. The so-called quick running race of eight kilometers is soon to begin. Shizu finished in fifth place. Doji leads his beloved horse like a hero. This is a nice ranking. Many people gave Hata to Shizu as well as Doji. Riding the new horse, little Tsuren didn't claim a spot in the ranking. After the revelry, people will go home. On the ground. 
grassland, Sarandagia strokes the hands of his two sons. He realizes that both of them have grown up a little bit today. The Sakadawa Festival is another grand occasion on the plateau. Pilgrims come from all over to get up close and personal with a flank. The 2.3 ton pole is 29 meters high, covered with yak skin and colorful prayer flags. More than 10,000 people calmly sit on the square of the temple, devoutly waiting for the flagpole to rise. They rush to carry stones to tamp the foundation. At an elevation of 5,000 meters, people can barely sustain their daily lives. Generations of people in the Doi village have lived on the pasture over 5,000 meters above sea. Over 1,000 sheep set out for a further place to forage. due to the limited food in winter. Mice and rabbits living by the lake have to go out of their caves to seek grass today. Today, they have to go a little further. This is a big opportunity for Tibetan foxes. In Puma Yunso, there are only two islands in the middle of the lake covered with grass. Herdsmen are waiting for the most important moment of the year.
even in the coldest season, the lake gives off a warm green color. On the surface of the ice, however, things are totally different. The sheep have made a journey of over 10 kilometers. At 5 a.m., people begin collecting dung ash. This can prevent the sheep's hooves from slipping. A lot of female sheep are pregnant now. A path paved by stone ash leads to an island. After a winter of grazing, little forage grass is left in other places. They should hit the road before dawn. A strong wind will blow over the lake surface by noon. Prior to the Tibetan New Year, every man in the Doi village has the responsibility for taking care of their sheep on the island. Grassland is not always smooth. There are many steep mountains breaking the flatness of the plains. The vulture, a divine bird, is hidden in these mountains. Expected guest arrives at the top of the cliff. Yugu, a man over 50 years old, is seeking what can soothe him. The year before last, Yugu had heart surgery. Last year, he went almost blind in his left eye. 
He now is a little anxious, as he has yet to pass on his valuable craft. Eagle flutes, which are made from the wing bones of an eagle, have a history of more than 1,000 years. People living on the grassland play the instrument to drive away loneliness when grazing. His two daughters are studying at universities in Chengdu. They will return to help their father during summer holidays. Yugu decided to make another eagle flute. It's a rather a slim chance to find eagle bones on the vast grassland. As Yugu was about to give up all hope, lo and behold, he found what he was looking for. Every eagle bone is presented to the descendants of eagle flute players in a miraculous way. It will be a while before Yugu starts to work on the bone. This may be the last one he will come across in his life. The grandfather passed on the skill to the father. <laughs>
who passed it on to Yubu. Finally, he can pass the torch. His two daughters are very happy, as they have their own eagle flutes at last. The prairie to the east of the Qinghai Tibet Plateau is the birthplace of a hero on horseback, Gassar. Legend has it that he helped people kill the evildoers and ghosts while teaching them skills to work on the farmland. His biography is the world's longest epic. It is still told and performed today. More than 100 poets are still traveling around telling the stories about King Gesar. Sita Doji, a special student at Tibet University, he is the youngest poet of King Gesar's biography, as well as the sole college student among the poets. To record his performances, the university has launched a long filming plan. In this way, he talked and sang for four hours in a row. Instead of feeling tired, he was enjoying the moment. It takes over 100 hours for Sita Duaji to tell all the stories in his mind, and that number keeps growing. According to Tibetan tradition, the way Sita Duaji becomes a poet is called charismata. Every day, with his teachers in the research room, Sita Doji writes down the stories told by the old poets. In the past, many artists couldn't read, but they were able to tell more than 100 legends about King Gesar. Hey, y'all. 
This is the song rooted in the plateau. Ancient heritage and modern elements are blended in the endless melody. Suchong is both a Tibetan doctor and a monk at a temple in the pasturing area. Since his childhood, Suchong has followed his master. They have cultivated themselves in a cave over the past 30 years. It is in this cave that Suchong has been studying the medical skills taught by his master. Suchong has various electronic products. In the old cave, he studies materials he needs through the internet. The most important part of traditional medicine he has made is stone. Every year, he will set out looking for stones. northern prairie, so he often asks the herdsmen for help. This time, he is looking for a magical stone that can treat strokes. <laughs> to steam and boil down such medical material as stones, Su Chang went to the holy lake Manasarovar to collect sacred water. pills he has made with all of his efforts to those who are in need of them. He will then present a bowl of pills to his master. Afterwards, he will set out on another journey for stones. This strong desire makes Tsuchong calmly face nature and give in the same manner. This is the sound from the plateau, enjoying sunshine and then giving away its fruits. An endless 
forest stands to the east of the plateau. In the forest, there are green lakes like gems and trees surrounded by sun glow. The peaks in the distance are called burning flames. At the foot of the mountains, there are old villages. in this village. It's here they live a carefree life. The morning here starts with walking pigs. But more pigs are gathered in the pasturing area. Pigs living here dig holes with their noses all day long. They're looking for plants underground rootstocks, most of which are herbal medicine. After breakfast, men ride on motorcycles with some highland barley to look for another group of pigs in the deep forest. These pigs live in the forest, searching for treasure here. Fresh fungi and wild fruit. Every family has their own pigs in the mountains. Even though owners only come here every few months, no one collects the wrong pigs, and no pig mistakes their owners. These pigs are called Tibetan pigs, also known as ginseng pigs. <laughs> Kind-hearted women always spare several old pigs, which can spend their remaining years in the forest. Human beings will never abandon their companions in whatever environment. For people in the Doi village, the most important thing is helping their sheep survive the winter. The first lamb is born. Mima is so happy that he feeds it with nutritious butter. More lambs are born every day. Ten days later, 
a large part of the ice has melted. The thinner the ice gets, the shorter time is left for sheep to eat grass. The breaking sounds of the deeper ice are like peals of thunder in the clouds. As the Tibetan New Year is approaching, Mima's mother and wife are quickly making woolen blankets to welcome his arrival. carries heavier herds, which are different from those 20 days earlier. Thanks to the generous treats of the island, more lives come home. The wisdom of herdsmen has been passed on through generations. The ice and islands have brought the hopes and dreams of another year to the people of the Doi village. <laughs>